Why hello there, welcome back to my channel. Great to have you back here once again. Oh God, how you doing, how you feeling? Hope you're good wherever you may be. God damn it, I'm looking jacked in this shirt, innit? See, huh? all that gym is paying off, right? I'm gonna get jacked, right? When I get jacked and nice and slim, talk to me nice or don't talk to me at all. Look at that, look at those guns. Look at those guns. Ugh. Anyway, back to the regular scheduled programming. And it appears that Malik B has broken his silence. <gasps> divulged all the gory details as to why he left the fire in the kid. Malik. And is it Malik or Malik? How am I pronouncing it wrong? Someone in the comments told me I was pronouncing it wrong. Is it Malik or Malik? Or Malik? Or Malik? Or Malak? What is it? Let me know in the comments down below how I'm meant to pronounce it. I think I'm getting it all the way wrong. Anyway, Malik B has broken his silence and divulged all the dirty, dirty details regarding his sudden departure from the fire in the kid. And I am shocked, shocked I tell you exactly what he had to say. Of course, he didn't divulge all the gory details. He went on David So podcast and essentially danced around it, which I can kind of understand. He's still, you know, working within LA. He's trying to make it in Hollywood. He's trying to be an entertainer, do his whole stand-up thing and like it or lump it for all you Brendan Schaub detractors out there. It's not really a good idea to go out there and start, you know, burning bridges and airing out people's dirty laundry. It's unnecessary. I think most of us have a good idea as to what went down and why he's no longer on the show anymore. We should be, you know, we should be satisfied enough with that for the time being. And who knows, maybe somewhere along the line, the truth will be revealed, but I don't think it's going to change anyone's, um, what do you call it? I don't think it's going to change anyone's idea or impression of Brendan Shaw, isn't it? Brendan Shaw fans are still going to be fans of his show. The ones that don't like him are not going to like him anyway. So, you know, getting a hold of some of their more intimate details isn't necessarily um, that important. But he did provide some insight into what kind of went down. And there's a little bit of the story that's kind of surprising toward the end that I'm really, really shocked by. So he appeared on the David So podcast and essentially, like I said before, danced around it, was a bit vague with some of the particularities regarding why he left. But there's some choice bits that I'm going to play now. And of course, I'm going to chop up some bits in the middle because the section itself was a bit long but definitely go and check out david so's channel he's got loads of great you know podcasts on there and interviews and i think the whole interview with malik b is pretty good anyway because it brings out a whole different side of malik that you don't really get to see on the fire and the kid you could definitely tell he was somewhat muted subdued controlled whilst he was at the fire and the kid and this side of his personality is far more um likable i would say for some of you guys that out there that weren't fans of him so definitely give this clip a listen and hear what he has to say and then i'll come on the other side hey, hey, why is everybody blowing up my shit dude? <laughs> Nah, um, but just get into it. Um, it wasn't a firing; it was just a departure. Yeah, okay, you know, and and it it was some oopsie, you know, something that you know, <laughs> really wanted me to agree to it, and I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't want to like those terms. You okay. know, I'm not about to do anything. I don't do anything for money. You know, I have principles, I have value. So, um, basically, to get in gist of it, it's just like, look, man, like I'm just trying to revamp my name. You know, like I get on Fighter and the Kids and Malik is a liar. Malik is, uh, you know, negative. Malik is the butt of the joke. No, I, I know how to play off comedy, you know. But, you know, when they get out there and just say, like, Malik got fired and they put that in people's heads, it's not what happened. And not, that's not what yeah. went down. So, you know, and, and here's the thing, bro. I, I'm a professional at all times. So what went and down I, then, bro? Tell us. Go back to the clip We're where dying to know. I talked to PBC. Come on. And, and I just. Divulge. You know, and and, and Brennan didn't believe me. You know, like I'm lying or something like that. I just stayed focused and started laughing because I was like, man, look at this dude. Yeah. <laughs> and it comes out that PBC talked to, I talked to PBC all the time. Yeah. To people that know, that's a boxing, that's what Al Heyman, I mm -hmm. come from that world. You know, and um, just just the whole gist of it is just like, man, you know. It, it, they really know. go in on Brendan, man. They send me clips all the time, but I was like, you know, it, it's uh, it's very funny. Yeah, you guys need to relax with sending the guy clips from you know people that aren't necessarily fans of him the guy has to work within that industry man the last thing he needs is to be flooded with all that negativity do you know what I mean just let leave the guy alone <laughs> make your jokes on the internet but there's no need to kind of get him involved and start sending him clips <laughs> just imagine how awkward it is for him to be watching clips of people you know taking the piss out of Brendan and he's got to go on the fire and the kid and like be you know be chummy chummy and fake some sort of you know camaraderie with him and like it must be super awkward no wonder Brendan told him to skedazzle man <laughs> imagine Brendan maybe accidentally saw him watching a clip that some of you guys sent him on his phone or something god damn I don't want to talk about that I just want to talk about like you know the the stuff behind the scenes yeah, yeah. and I'll and I'll address more about it on the podcast because I can say whatever I want mm -hmm. you know? then say it mate you know? and uh, say it I didn't want to sign the, those agreements I don't I'm not a yes man I don't I don't really dictate my future or my career on 
somebody else's terms. Okay. So I, I'd rather bet on myself. I stand up on my man. I don't live on my knees. What does that phrase mean? Does that phrase mean he doesn't give blowjobs? I don't understand what that phrase means. I don't live on my knees. Or does that mean he doesn't beg? Because someone let me know. Is that an American phrase? I don't give blowjobs? Or does that mean I don't beg for things? I have no idea. Maybe I'm just an uncultured British guy. I have no idea what that means. In the, in the middle of the night, I'll be like, yo, he, you know, he takes me, I'm off tour. Like, damn, I prepared all week for, <laughs> you know, this show. Mm -hmm. And then on Monday, you text me, I see you. You know, face to face. And I, I, if I have any issue, I tell everyone knows my rep. I say it to your face. I'm like, bro, I have a, I have a problem with you. You know, as a man, that's how I was conduct myself. That's how I was raised. Mm -hmm. I talk to people. If I have an issue, I talk to, you know, straight directly towards you. I don't do over text. I don't do over the phone. I don't do none of that. So that's what the code I live by. And that's what okay. I stand for. So, you know, <clears throat> it's just, just so much stuff I can just say. And I will say. But right now, I just I'm not on fighter and the kids because okay. I didn't want to agree to those kind of terms that he set. And I'm like, some people can. I don't, you know, and that's them. But let's be honest, we know a lot of people will do anything for money, yeah. or success, or fame, and they will lose their principle and their values. And I wasn't cut like that. And I, I will, it will hurt, it will burn if, if I, you know, don't stand on my word or don't be a man of my word or just stand on my own 10 toes and just like, no, this is not right. Mm -hmm. And I, I accept that. No. And, and for the listeners and the viewers, <clears throat> this is not a bashing a Brendan Shaw. It's yeah. not. It's trying to tell you like Malik is like, I'm, I tell the truth all the time. And if, and if he feel like, Oh, he can go bash me and all that. I tell him, bash me. Tell him, it's no proof of Malik. Just, you know, anything, everything I did is I'm a man of my word. I say what I mean. I do what I I tell you I'm going to do. And, and and they know that. Everyone knows that. So it's not like I'm bitter or stuff like that. No. Yeah. I'm happy. Yeah. I feel good not being suffocated anymore. Ooh. You know? And that's the whole thing about it. So when you say... So that basically is the gist of it. And you can kind of read between the lines and get some understanding as to what went on. But the most revealing part of it, the interesting part, is the bit about um him supposedly going on tour, preparing all week. And then Brendan telling him last minute, you're not coming anymore. I'm assuming that might have happened due to the all the clips that were going around because a part of me does believe he probably shouldn't because I'm sure it's not good for his overall um, creative output and his perspective on how he's viewed in comedy. But I'm pretty much certain that Brendan Shaw probably visits the Fire and the Kids subreddit um, a lot more often than he probably would like to admit. And maybe somewhere along the week, he possibly saw a clip that didn't make him look good or he maybe saw Malik, you know, in one of those clips, make maybe make a face that he didn't notice at the time of recording and then he was like you know what f this guy you're not coming on my tour do you know what I mean maybe that was something that might have happened but still it's grossly grossly unprofessional and it's interesting too because considering how close he is to joe rogan and considering how amazing of a friend joe rogan is forget all the stuff that you've seen on the internet when it comes to really promoting people and giving people a platform there's no one better in the comedy scene than joe rogan he gives platforms to people like he's he's had like old school boston comics that he came up with back in the day who people have completely forgot about right degenerate gamblers and alcoholics people that probably don't don't even you know go on tour outside of their state that often but Joe Rogan still have him on his show because that guy was the person that basically gave him a chance or told him his joke was funny like he gives a chance to anybody anyone and everybody in a comedy scene to kind of get on his platform and essentially have the audience of potential audience of millions gain new fans and obviously you know boost their profile so for someone like for, for Brendan to be friends with someone like Joe who I would never assume would do something like that to one of his co-hosts someone that worked to his show he wouldn't just let you prepare a week for a show and then tell you you're not coming because that's essentially taking money out of your pocket right and that's one thing that you don't really hear from from the stories you hear on podcasts he's always paying for people's meals and setting people up with podcasting sponsorship like he goes above and beyond to do that so it's a bit strange if you're a Ben and Shub and you're friends with Joe Rogan that you would do something like that but it also does show maybe there is some credence to the whole idea that people have where they generally do think Brennan's a bad dude. I don't necessarily think that. I'm not too sure if I'm really on that train. Again, I don't necessarily think his comedy is that great. I still think there's a possibility in a space where he could definitely improve and grow into being a good comic, I think. I'm not too sure. But there's also a rational part of me that thinks if you don't have a sense of humor, especially that sort of timing on stage and you start stand up in your late 30s, can you really get that good especially if you don't do open mics that's a problem because i think who's the guy that actually there is a guy actually in the la comedy scene who started really late um who hosts a podcast and he's really into metal music 
He's friends with Joey Diaz, but he's one of the, he's an exception because if you listen to his story, he basically said that he used to go and do spots. He'd get on his motorbike and do, you know, open mics anywhere throughout the week, right? He'd do like maybe, let's say six a day, something insane like that, and just be going from spot to spot to spot to spot to spot. So he basically did the traditional way to improve and get better at stand-up comedy. And he's legitimately, from what I hear, really funny, super talented. He sings really well. He plays instruments and stuff. So he's an all-round creative dude in that respect. So maybe that's the only exception I've seen to the rules so far, but it is a bit doubtful that someone like a Brendan, who probably isn't the funniest, even in his own podcast, can somehow become funny on the stage. But who knows? It's up for debate. It really is up for debate. But I guess in terms of the dynamic on a podcast, if I can read between the lines, what I think might have happened is that, do you remember that clip where Chappelle and Malik are like laughing extra hard at something they joked about? And then Brendan goes, oh, 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 like really sarcastically because he's super like pissed off that they're basically laughing at him and not with him. That was also a, a good sign that maybe he hasn't got the comedic chops that he thinks he has because one of the things that you can't have if you're a comedian is really thin skin or you can't have it appear that you do have thin skin even if you do you kind of have to keep it in private but you can't let people know that you got thin skin do you know what I mean you can have thin skin but you can't let people know so maybe that was a good indication as to Brendan probably seeing that hey I can't let these two guys gang up on me on a show I have to be the number one dog in this which probably makes sense if you think about the way they even sit down on the show right i think after that show where i mentioned where brendan kind of laughed sarcastically he moved his chair from the side to the middle so again you know a certain dominance and then when they moved to that um diner type studio they have now at the moment or when they redesigned the studio into that diner thing he then sat in the middle too so he wanted to make sure that he was a dominant one like you know this is my show and you guys are my co-host sort of thing so maybe that was it maybe he thought malik was getting a little bit too comfortable and too friendly with Chappelle. They had obviously a little bit of a friendship before. Obviously, Chappelle kind of decided to hitch his wagon on the whole Brendan Shaw train. But maybe that's it. Maybe that's all it is. Maybe Brendan just got a bit jealous of the airtime Malik was getting and the fact that Chappelle was often extra, extra hard at his jokes and not, you know, at his own. And then decided, you know what, it's better off. I'd chuck you off. Or maybe the whole plan was to bring back Brian Cannon on the show anyway to begin with. Because if you've seen clips so far, on, I think on the last two episodes or whatever, Brian Cannon's been on. Um, quietly you know they haven't really announced it too tough so that's obviously a tactic that they're looking to pursue but it kind of feels like to me the magic is basically gone from that show you know the the good days were definitely when it was on Fox and maybe the early days when Sasso and Chris D'Elia prior to the allegations was on there a, a lot you know early Thea Vaughan appearances those were some of the classic the Fire and the Kid episodes but ever since kind of Brenda's egos kind of got the better of him that show has really gone down the drain unfortunately can it come back probably not are there loads of other shows that you could probably listen to probably do you need to go and harass Malik in terms of letting him divulge all the details and in process help him to ruin his own career nah don't do that just leave it be I guess it is what it is um he's not on the show anymore he looks like he's in a much better space and hopefully he can kick on from there but let me know what you think in the comments do you think Malik B should be spilling the beans or are you surprised by some of the allegations that have been levied against Brennan Schaub let me know in the comments down below I'll be more than happy to hear and and read and reply to your comments and i'll see you guys again very very soon take care be safe peace